The key in the lock felt heavier than usual as I fumbled to open the front door. My head buzzed pleasantly from the beers I'd had at the work gathering, but a nagging guilt tugged at the edges of my consciousness. I knew Jessica would be waiting up, probably worried and upset. I stepped inside, the warmth of our cozy Seattle home enveloping me. Jess, I called out, trying to keep my voice steady. I'm home. Jessica appeared in the hallway, her arms crossed over her swollen belly. Even in the dim light, I could see the tight set of her jaw, the hurt and anger in her eyes. Where have you been, Eric? She demanded, her voice trembling slightly. I sighed, running a hand through my hair. I told you, there was a work thing. We were celebrating landing that big account. Until almost midnight, Jessica's eyebrows shot up. You couldn't even bother to text me. Guilt gnawed at me. I should have messaged her, but time had gotten away from me. I'm sorry. I lost track of time. It won't happen again. Jessica let out a bitter laugh. That's what you said last time, and the time before that. What's that supposed to mean? I felt a flare of defensiveness. It means I'm tired of being left alone, wondering where my husband is. Jessica's voice rose. I'm seven months pregnant, Eric. I need you here, not out drinking with your co-workers every other night. I took a step towards her, trying to keep my voice calm. Jess, come on. You know how important this account is for my career. I'm doing this for us. For our family. Are you? She shot back. Or is there someone else? The accusation hit me like a punch to the gut. What? How could you even think that? Jessica's eyes filled with tears. What am I supposed to think? You're never home. You're always distracted when you are here. I feel like I don't even know you anymore. That's ridiculous, I said, my own anger rising. I've never been anything but faithful to you. Then why does it feel like you're slipping away? Jessica's voice cracked. I ran my hands over my face, frustration mounting. I'm not slipping away. I'm right here trying to build a future for us and our baby. Jessica went quiet for a moment, and when she spoke again, her voice was barely above a whisper. Our baby. Something in her tone made my blood run cold. What about our baby? She looked up at me, her eyes filled with a mixture of pain and defiance. It's not yours, Eric. The world tilted on its axis. What did you say? The baby, Jessica said her hand moving to her stomach. It's not yours. I stumbled back, gripping the wall for support. That's, that's not possible. We've been trying for months. Jessica's face crumpled. I had an affair. I thought, I was so sure you were cheating on me. I wanted to hurt you like I thought you were hurting me. The room spun. I couldn't breathe. Who? I managed to choke out. It doesn't matter. Jessica said, shaking her head. Like hell it doesn't. I shouted, making her flinch. Who is he? Jessica wrapped her arms around herself. His name is Derek. It was just one time, I swear. But he, he took the condom off without telling me. Rage and disgust warred within me. So not only did you cheat on me, but you're carrying the child of a man who assaulted you. I didn't know what to do. Jessica sobbed. I was scared and ashamed. And then I found out I was pregnant. I couldn't listen anymore. My entire world was crashing down around me. I need to get out of here, I muttered, turning towards the door. Eric, please. Jessica reached for me, but I jerked away from her touch. Don't. I warned, my voice low and dangerous. Don't touch me. Don't talk to me. I can't. I can't even look at you right now. I stumbled out into the night, ignoring Jessica's pleas behind me. My feet carried me down the familiar streets until I found myself outside Adam's apartment building. I pounded on his door, not caring about the late hour. Adam opened the door, bleary-eyed and confused. Eric, what's wrong, man? I pushed past him into the apartment, my whole body shaking. She cheated on me, Adam. Jessica cheated on me, and the baby isn't mine. Adam's eyes widened in shock. 
Holy shit, Eric. I'm so sorry. Come in. Sit down. Tell me what happened. As I sank onto Adam's couch, the full weight of Jessica's betrayal crashed over me. My marriage, my future, everything I thought I knew. It had all been a lie. And as I poured out the whole sordid story to my best friend, I knew that nothing would ever be the same again. The week dragged by in a blur of sleepless nights and tense phone calls. I'd been staying at Adam's place, unable to face going home. But now, as I stood at the edge of the park, I wondered if I should have just stayed away. Colorful balloons bobbed in the breeze, and a banner reading boy or girl fluttered between two trees. My stomach churned at the sight. You sure you want to do this? Adam asked, his hand on my shoulder. I nodded, jaw clenched. I need to. We made our way through the crowd. Friends and family milled about, laughing and chatting. Their normalcy felt like a slap in the face. I spotted Jessica near the center of the gathering. Our eyes met, and for a moment, hope flashed across her face. She started towards me, one hand on her swollen belly. Eric, she said, reaching for my arm. I'm so glad you came, I thought. I jerked away from her touch. Don't. Jessica's face fell. Please, can we talk? I know I made a terrible mistake, but... A mistake. I laughed bitterly. Is that what you call it? People around us had gone quiet, sensing the tension. Jessica glanced nervously at the crowd. Eric, not here, she pleaded. Let's go somewhere private. Why? I asked, my voice rising, worried about what people might think. Well, guess what, Jess? I don't give a damn anymore. I turned to face the gathering, my heart pounding. Hey, everyone. Thanks for coming to our gender reveal party. I've got an announcement to make. Jessica grabbed my arm. Eric, stop. Please. I shook her off. You all came here expecting to find out if we're having a boy or a girl. Well, I've got news for you. It doesn't matter. Because this baby isn't mine. Gasps and murmurs rippled through the crowd. Jessica's mother let out a strangled cry. That's right. I continued, my voice shaking with anger. My wife had an affair. She's been lying to me for months, letting me believe I was going to be a father. But it was all a lie. Jessica was sobbing now, her makeup streaking down her face. Eric, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I turned to her, my voice cold. Save it. I'm done with your lies and your excuses. I'm filing for divorce. With that, I turned and walked away. The shocked silence of the crowd gave way to a buzz of whispers and exclamations. I heard Jessica's mother calling after me, but I didn't look back. Adam caught up with me at the edge of the park. Holy shit, man. That was intense. I let out a shaky breath. Yeah, let's get out of here. I need a drink. The club's pulsing music did little to drown out the thoughts swirling in my head. I knocked back another shot, wincing at the burn. Maybe we should call it a night. Adam suggested, eyeing me with concern. I shook my head. Not yet. One more round. Adam sighed but didn't argue. As he went to the bar... I slumped in my seat, the events of the day replaining in my mind. An hour later, we stumbled out of the club. The cool night air hit me like a slap to the face. Let me drive you home, Adam offered, fishing for his keys. Nah, I'm gonna walk, I said waving him off. Clear my head. Adam frowned. You sure? It's late, man. I'll be fine. Go home get some sleep. He hesitated but finally nodded. All right, text me when you get in, okay? I promised I would and set off down the dark street. The world swayed slightly as I walked, my thoughts a jumbled mess. I was so lost in my own head that I didn't notice the figure emerging from the shadows until it was too late. A hand grabbed my shoulder, spinning me around. You think you're so smart, don't you? A man's voice snarled. I blinked, trying to focus. The man's face swam into view, angular features, dark hair, eyes blazing with anger. Who the hell are you? 
I demanded, trying to shake him off. He shoved me against the wall, and I felt something cold press against my throat. My blood ran ice cold as I realized it was a knife. Name's Direk, he growled. Ring any bells. It took a moment for my alcohol fog brain to make the connection. When it did, a fresh wave of anger surged through me. You, I spat. You're the one, whoa. Shut up, Derek hissed, pressing the knife harder. Listen carefully. You're going to go home to your wife. You're going to raise that kid as your own. And you're going to keep your mouth shut about all of this. Got it. I let out a harsh laugh. Like hell I will. You can go, to. The punch caught me off guard, sending me sprawling to the ground. Derek was on me in an instant, the knife glinting in the streetlight. I'm not asking, he snarled. I've got a family, a life. I'm not letting you ruin that. I struggled against him, but he had the advantage. Get off me, you piece off. Suddenly, Derek's weight was thrown off me. I heard a grunt of pain and looked up to see Adam grappling with him. Eric, you okay? Adam called, dodging a wild swing from Derek. I scrambled to my feet, adrenaline clearing some of the fog from my brain. Derek lashed out with the knife, catching Adam's arm. But before he could do more damage, I tackled him from behind. We fell in a tangle of limbs, punching and kicking. I felt the sting of the knife across my cheek, but rage and fear gave me strength. I slammed my fist into Derek's face, feeling a sick satisfaction at the crunch of bone. Eric, Eric, stop. Adam's voice cut through the haze of violence. I looked up, breathing hard. Derek lay motionless beneath me, his face a bloody mess. For a terrifying moment, I thought I might have killed him. Is he? I couldn't finish the question. Adam knelt beside us, checking Derek's pulse. He's alive. Just knocked out. Relief washed over me, quickly followed by a wave of nausea. I stumbled away and retched in the gutter. When I straightened up, Derek was gone. What the hell? I looked around wildly. Where'd he go? Adam shook his head, looking as shocked as I felt. I was checking on you. And he just, he must have come to and run off. We stood there in the empty street, battered and shaken. The reality of what had just happened began to sink in. We need to go to the police, Adam said his voice grim. I nodded, touching my throbbing cheek. Yeah, yeah, we do. As we made our way to Adam's car, I couldn't shake the feeling that this was far from over. The life I'd known had been shattered, and I was only just beginning to see the jagged edges. The fluorescent lights of the police station buzzed overhead, matching the dull throb in my head. Adam and I sat in hard plastic chairs, waiting for Detective Williams. How's your face? Adam asked, gesturing to the cut on my cheek. I touched it gingerly. Stings. How's your arm? Adam shrugged. Just a scratch. Could have been worse. A tall woman with short gray hair approached us. Mr. Thompson, I'm Detective Williams. Follow me, please. We entered a small interview room. Detective Williams sat across from us her stern gaze softening slightly as she took in our battered appearance. All right, gentlemen, walk me through what happened last night. I cleared my throat. I was walking home from a club when this guy, Derek, jumped me. He had a knife. Did you know this Derek before the attack? Detective Williams asked. I hesitated, glancing at Adam. He nodded encouragingly. Not exactly, I said. He's... He's the man my wife had an affair with. Detective Williams raised an eyebrow. I see. And how did you come to know this? My wife told me last week. She's pregnant, and the baby isn't mine. The detective's pen scratched across her notepad. And the attacker, Derek, he's the father. I nodded, a wave of nausea washing over me. He threatened me. I continued, said I had to raise the kid as my own, and keep quiet about the affair. He's married too, apparently. Did he say why he attacked you specifically? Adam jumped in. 
Eric had just announced the affair at a party earlier that day. Guess Derek found out and panicked. Detective Williams turned to Adam. And how did you get involved, Mr. Miller? Adam Miller. I'm Eric's friend. I was worried about him walking home alone, so I followed. Good thing I did. The detective nodded. Indeed. Now, can you describe Derek? Any distinguishing features? I closed my eyes, picturing his face. Dark hair. Kinda long. Sharp features. There was a scar on his left eyebrow. Good. Detective Williams said. Anything else you can remember? What he was wearing, maybe. We spent the next hour going over every detail we could remember. By the end, my head was pounding and I felt drained. We'll look into this direct, Detective Williams said, standing. In the meantime, be careful. If he contacts you again, call us immediately. As we left the station, Adam turned to me. You okay, man? I shook my head. Not even close. But thanks for everything. That's what friends are for, he said, clapping me on the shoulder. Now let's get some coffee. I have a feeling we're gonna need it. A week later, I found myself in the passenger seat of a police cruiser, Detective Williams at the wheel. We pulled up to a large house in an upscale neighborhood. You sure you want to do this? Detective Williams asked. I nodded, my jaw set. I need to face him. We approached the front door, and Detective Williams knocked. A woman answered, slim, blonde, confused. Can I help you? She asked. Mrs. Wilson. Detective Williams showed her badge. I'm Detective Williams. This is Eric Thompson. We need to speak with your husband. The woman's brow furrowed. Derek. He's in his study. Is something wrong? Before anyone could answer, Derek appeared behind her. His eyes widened when he saw me, then narrowed. Linda, who's at the door? He asked, his voice carefully controlled. Detective Williams stepped forward. Mr. Wilson, we need to talk about your assault on Mr. Thompson last week. Linda gasped. Assault? Derek, what's going on? Derek's face hardened. I don't know what you're talking about. I've never seen this man before in my life. I couldn't hold back anymore. Cut the crap, Derek. You know exactly who I am. Eric, Detective Williams warned, but I pressed on. Tell her, Derek. Tell your wife how you had an affair with my wife, how you got her pregnant, and then tried to threaten me into silence. Linda stumbled back, her face pale. What? Derek, is this true? Derek's composure cracked. Linda, I can explain. Explain what? She cried. That you cheated on me. That you attacked this man. Mr. Wilson, Detective Williams cut in. We have evidence linking you to the assault. I'm going to need you to come with us. Derek's eyes darted between us, panic setting in. You can't prove anything. It's his word against mine. Actually, the detective said, we have security footage from a nearby building. It clearly shows you attacking Mr. Thompson. Derek's shoulders sagged in defeat. As Detective Williams read him his rights, Linda turned to me, tears in her eyes. I'm so sorry, she whispered. I had no idea. I nodded, not trusting myself to speak. As they led Derek away in handcuffs, I felt a strange mix of satisfaction and emptiness. Linda hugged herself, looking lost. What am I supposed to do now? I hesitated, then said softly, Start over. It's what I'm trying to do. She nodded, a glimmer of determination in her eyes. I think... I think I need to call a divorce lawyer. As we left, I couldn't help but feel a sense of closure. One chapter of this nightmare was ending, but I knew there was still more to face. The courthouse loomed before me, a monument to the end of my marriage. I adjusted my tie, trying to quell the butterflies in my stomach. Adam stood beside me, a steady presence. You ready for this? I took a deep breath, as I'll ever be. Inside, we met my lawyer, Starachin. She greeted us with a firm handshake. Eric, how are you holding up? She asked. 
Nervous, I admitted. What can I expect in there? Sarah's expression turned serious. Jessica's lawyer is going to push for child support. They're arguing that since you were married when the child was conceived, you're legally responsible. I felt my blood pressure rising. That's ridiculous. The DNA test proved I'm not the father. I know, Sarah said, holding up a hand. We have a strong case. The DNA results, combined with Jessica's admission of the affair, should be enough to sway the judge. We entered the courtroom. Jessica sat on the other side with her lawyer, looking pale and drawn. Our eyes met briefly before she looked away. The judge, a stern-looking woman in her sixties, called the court to order. Jessica's lawyer spoke first. Your Honor, my client is a pregnant woman facing the prospect of raising a child alone. Mr. Thompson has a moral obligation to support this child. I gritted my teeth, but Sarah squeezed my arm, silently urging me to stay calm. When it was our turn, Sarah stood. Your Honor, while we sympathize with Mrs. Thompson's situation, the fact remains that Mr. Thompson is not the biological father of this child. DNA testing has confirmed this. Furthermore, Mrs. Thompson admitted to having an extramarital affair, which resulted in this pregnancy. The judge turned to Jessica. Mrs. Thompson, is this true? Jessica's voice was barely audible. Yes, your honor. And the biological father. Jessica's lawyer stepped in. The alleged father is currently facing criminal charges and is unable to provide support. The judge frowned. I see. Mr. Thompson, do you wish to pursue any custody rights for this child? I stood, my voice steady. No, your honor. I wish to terminate all parental rights and responsibilities. The next hour was a blur of legal jargon and negotiations. In the end, the judge ruled in my favor. I was not responsible for child support, and our divorce was granted. As we left the courtroom, Jessica approached me, her eyes red-rimmed. Eric, I, she began. I held up a hand. Don't. There's nothing left to say. She nodded, tears spilling down her cheeks. I'm sorry. For everything. I watched her walk away, a chapter of my life closing with each step she took. Adam clapped me on the shoulder. You okay? I let out a long breath. Yeah, yeah. I think I am. As we stepped out of the courthouse, I felt a weight lift from my shoulders. The road ahead was uncertain, but for the first time in months, I felt hope. The key turned smoothly in the lock of my new apartment. I pushed the door open, revealing a space that was all mine. No memories, no ghosts of the past. Adam stood behind me, carrying a box. So, this is it, huh? Your bachelor pad. I chuckled, the sound still feeling a bit foreign. I guess so. Come on in. We entered the living room, sunlight streaming through bare windows. Adam set the box down and whistled. Not bad, man. Got a nice view of the city. I nodded, running a hand along the kitchen counter. Yeah, it's different. Adam cocked his head. Different good or different bad? I took a deep breath. Different good. I think it's a fresh start. That's the spirit. Adam said, clapping me on the shoulder. Now, where do you want this stuff? We spent the next few hours unpacking, the apartment slowly coming to life with each box we emptied. As we worked, we fell into easy conversation. You know, Adam said, hanging a framed photo, I'm proud of you, Eric. You've been through hell, but you're still standing. I paused, a stack of books in my hands. Thanks, man. I couldn't have done it without you. Adam waved it off. Nah, this was all you. I just provided the beer and moral support. I laughed, the sound more genuine this time. Well, the beer was crucial. As the sun began to set, we collapsed onto the couch, surveying our handiwork. The apartment looked lived in now, a mix of old memories and new possibilities. Adam turned to me. So... What's next for Eric Thompson? I leaned back, considering. Honestly, I'm not sure. For the first time, in a long time, I feel free. 
Free is good. Adam nodded. Any thoughts on getting back out there? Dating-wise, I mean. I shook my head. Not yet. I think I need some time to just be me, you know. Adam smiled. I get it. But when you're ready, I know a few single ladies who'd be lucky to meet you. I threw a pillow at him, laughing. Easy there, matchmaker. Let's focus on one new beginning at a time. As Adam left that evening, I stood in the center of my new home. The silence was different here, not the heavy, accusatory silence of my old house, but a quiet full of possibility. I picked up my phone, thumb hovering over Jessica's contact. With a deep breath, I deleted her number. It was time to truly move forward. Months passed, and I threw myself into my work. The office became a sanctuary, a place where I could focus on something other than my personal life. My boss, Karen, called me into her office one sunny afternoon. Eric, take a seat. I sat curious. Everything okay, Karen? She smiled, leaning forward. More than okay. I've been watching your work these past few months. You've really stepped up. I nodded, a hint of pride warming my chest. Thanks. I've been trying to challenge myself. It shows, Karen said, which is why I'd like to offer you a promotion. Senior account manager, what do you think? My eyes widened. Wow, Karen, I that's incredible. Thank you. She waved a hand. Don't thank me. You've earned it. The team respects you and your clients love you. So are you in? Absolutely. I said grinning. When do I start? As I left Karen's office, my colleagues gathered around, sensing good news. Well? My co-worker Tom asked. What did the boss want? I couldn't hold back my smile. You're looking at the new senior account manager. Cheers erupted, and I found myself surrounded by congratulations and backslaps. For a moment, I felt truly happy, truly accomplished. That evening, as I packed up my desk, my phone buzzed. A text from Jessica. I'm at the hospital. Baby's coming. No one's here. I know I have no right to ask, but can you come? I stared at the message, a whirlwind of emotions hitting me. After everything, she was asking this. I should ignore it, delete it like I deleted her number. But something made me hesitate. With a sigh, I grabbed my keys and headed for the hospital. The maternity ward was a maze of corridors and anxious faces. I found Jessica's room, pausing outside the door. What was I doing here? Before I could second-guess myself, I knocked and entered. Jessica lay on the bed, her face pale and drawn. Her eyes widened when she saw me. Eric, you, you came. I nodded, keeping my distance. Yeah, how are you doing? She grimaced as a contraction hid. Scared. In pain. I'm sorry for texting you. I just... I didn't know who else to call. I pulled up a chair, careful to maintain some space between us. It's okay. No one should go through this alone. The next few hours were a blur of doctors, nurses, and Jessica's labored breathing. I found myself holding her hand during contractions, murmuring encouragement. Finally, a cry pierced the air. The doctor held up a squirming, red-faced baby. It's a boy. Jessica sobbed, a mix of relief and joy. As the nurses cleaned up the baby, she turned to me, her eyes pleading. Eric, I... I know I've hurt you. I've made so many mistakes. Can you ever forgive me? I looked at her, then at the baby being placed in her arms. The anger and hurt I'd carried for so long seemed to dim in the face of this new life. Jessica, I said softly, I forgive you, but I can't forget. What we had, it's over, but I hope you find happiness with your son. Tears streamed down her face as she nodded. Thank you. For being here. For everything. I stood, watching as she cradled her baby. It was a beautiful moment, but it wasn't mine. As I turned to leave, I felt a weight lift from my shoulders. The last tie to my old life had been severed, and I was ready to embrace whatever came next. 
Weeks after the hospital, I found myself in a small coffee shop near my new apartment. The aroma of freshly ground beans filled the air as I settled into a corner table with my laptop. As I typed away, engrossed in a project proposal, a voice interrupted my concentration. Excuse me, is this seat taken? I looked up to see a woman gesturing to the empty chair across from me. She had warm brown eyes and a friendly smile. Oh no, go ahead, I said, moving my bag. She sat down with a grateful nod. Thanks, it's packed in here today. I glanced around, noticing the crowded cafe for the first time. Yeah, I guess I was too focused to notice. She laughed, a pleasant sound. Must be some project you're working on. I found myself smiling back. Just a proposal for work. I'm Eric, by the way. Sophia, she replied, extending her hand. Nice to meet you, Eric. As we shook hands, I felt a spark of something. Interest. Curiosity. It had been so long since I'd felt anything like it. So, Sophia, I said, surprising myself with my forwardness. What brings you to this coffee shop on such a busy day? She held up a well-worn book, just looking for a quiet place to read. Well, quieter than my apartment, at least. My upstairs neighbor seems to think 3 p.m. is the perfect time for tap dancing practice. I laughed. Sounds like quite the show. What are you reading? Sophia showed me the cover. It's a mystery novel. I'm a sucker for a good whodunit. Really? I felt my interest peak. I love mysteries, too. Have you read any James Patterson? Her eyes lit up. Have I? I've got his entire Alex Cross series at home. Before I knew it, we were deep in conversation, discussing our favorite books, movies, and TV shows. Time seemed to slip away as we talked and laughed. Finally, Sophia glanced at her watch. Oh, wow. I didn't realize how late it's gotten. I should probably head home. I felt a twinge of disappointment. Yeah, me too. But, uh, this was really nice. Sophia smiled, a hint of shyness in her expression. It was. Maybe we could do it again sometime. My heart skipped a beat. I'd like that. How about we exchange numbers? As we swapped phones to input our contact information, I felt a sense of excitement I hadn't experienced in years. When we said goodbye, there was a promise of something new, something hopeful in the air. Walking home, I couldn't wipe the smile off my face. The future, which had seemed so bleak not too long ago, now held the possibility of joy, of connection. As I entered my apartment, I paused to look at the city skyline through my window. The sun was setting, painting the sky in vibrant oranges and pinks. It struck me then. This wasn't just an ending to my old life. It was the beginning of something new, something potentially wonderful. I pulled out my phone, my thumb hovering over Sophia's number. Taking a deep breath, I typed out a message. Really enjoyed talking with you today. Dinner sometime this week. As I hit send, I felt a rush of anticipation. Whatever came next, I was ready for it. The journey had been hard, filled with betrayal and pain. But it had led me here, to a place of strength, of hope, of new beginnings. The past was behind me. The future, bright with possibility, lay ahead. And for the first time in a long time, I couldn't wait to see what it held. Thanks to everyone who took the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed it, please consider liking and subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share your thoughts on the events in the comments below. Take care.